Welcome to Kim's Kitchen. Come on in, let's see what we can learn to bake or cook today. So this is the first step of pickle making. You need to sterilize your jars. You take the lids. So I have some of my old lids and here are um, new ones. So you'll have to unscrew the lids and take these off. And then you put them in. I will put a dishwasher tab in too with them, but um, the jars need to be sterilized because if there's any kind of amoebas or anything on them, Amoebas. That's the word I use, amoebas. Then when you can your pickles, they'll go bad. So, first step is that you need to sterilize all of your jars. So when you get your jars for pickling, um, because I'm making dill pickles with like the, the whole dill, you need to make sure that you get the jars with the wide lid. So I bought extra lids. It actually says the size here. And on the size it says 86 millimeters. Right there. So that is the size of the lid that you need. If you have some jars at home and you need to get some. So this is the process of I'm taking the lids off and I'm putting the jars in to clean them up, like I said before. Hi guys, before we get started with um, the canning of the pickles, these are the things that you're going to need. I have a 35 pound bag of baby dills um, that I got at my local market. Um, some markets you can call the farmers ahead of time and order them, uh, like I do, or uh, you can just get them there by the bushel. So this would be like a, probably a, a full bushel. So as you can see they're dirty right now, so I'm going to need to soak them in the sink and scrub them down because if there's any dirt on them, like once again, once it gets into the pickling process, it uh, will make them go bad. Um, I have an entire bunch of dill. Now I'm not going to be using all this, it's going to get cut up um, and we'll be using the tops and parts of the stock. And I have about eight bunches of garlic. And if I have extra, I'll just put it in the freezer and I can use it. Um, you will also need uh, just regular pure white vinegar. I don't use pickling vinegar, I don't like the flavor. Um, I find it has too much acidity in it but you can use it if you prefer but I use just a regular pure white vinegar you're gonna need a uh, household salt a big box um, something that can measure quarts a regular measuring cup you're gonna need um, this to put on the top of your jars I can't think of the name of it is it's sort of like a sieve I guess but uh, uh, so you don't spill out you're also going to need um, mustard seed for your taste in the brine when we make it. Um, and like I said, uh, the other things that you're going to need is I've already separated my lids and my caps. I have extras. I have three metal bowls that I use to help separate. I have an extra bottle of vinegar just in case I run out. And I make hot dill pickles, so I get hot banana peppers and I cut a couple of chili peppers. And um, those are all going to get cut up and I'll show you how that gets done. And that's why the gloves are here because cutting up the hot peppers can get pretty hot on the skin if you don't have the proper equipment. So that is all the stuff that we're going to be using. So the hot banana peppers, some gloves, you have your jars, uh, sanitizing, um, sterilizing rather, um, your lids, which we will boil later. Uh, the other important thing is, is that you're going to need a very large stock pot. So I can't remember the exact size of mine. It doesn't have the measurement on it, but you will need a large stock pot uh, to boil your brine. You're also going to need a small pot to boil your lids in when you get to that point. Also, uh, in my oven, I take the top rack out because I warm the jars in the oven before I put my brine in. So your packed jars will be sitting in the oven at about 325 um, until you're ready to put your brine in. So when we get to that point, we'll talk about it. So once again, number one, you need your dills, baby dills, the small ones, dill, garlic, I have about eight bunches, vinegar, salt, something to measure quarts, a regular measuring cup to put on the top of the jar so you have no spillage, mustard seed, a stock pot, a pot to boil your lids in, um, extra lids in case you need them. I have three metal bowls 
and the hot peppers and gloves. And then once my jars are done and I'm done my workout, I think that we're gonna get to it. So uh, we'll see you soon. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Kim's Kitchen. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to um, make hot dill pickles while we'll canning them. If this isn't something that you're interested in learning, I have another video about making a simple white cake. And we have a ton of other videos on our channel that you can uh, watch also if this isn't your bag. Um, but you should because these are the best pickles that you'll ever eat in your entire life. So um, before I get started, I just want to make sure I have everything organized. I'm going to try and get some of this stuff out of my way. Um, I've taken all the lids off of my jars, which have almost been finished sterilizing in my dishwasher. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw all these lids into a pot and I'm going to add some water to that. And I'm just going to leave it on the stove because we aren't going to need these lids boiled until the end. But I'm going to get that out of the way first so that I don't have to think about it. So once you get your lids on the stove and out of the way, um, the next most important thing to do is get your brine started. So for our brine today, we're going to be doing two quarts of water to one quart of white vinegar and a half cup of salt. And I'm going to continue that process until I reach up to the top. So I'm going to get my two quarts of water. If you don't have a measuring cup with quarts on it, um, two quarts is eight cups. And then my one quart of white vinegar. And then my half a cup of salt. And I'm just going to continue that process until I get to the top. It shouldn't take too long. So I have, now I have my mixture done all the way to the top. So I'm going to turn my stove on to high to get the boil started. Now, mustard seed. This gives it a little bit of a kick. Um, it actually says in the bottle a hot, sharp taste. And it does give it a nice little kick. Um, so you can measure it out if you want. Um, I generally just sort of put it in until I like the amount that I see. So I'm going to put in um, one, two, yeah, three tablespoons. See how that does it. It'll just boil away with the water so you don't need to worry about that. Put my lid on and put my fan on low. So my house doesn't smell like vinegar and there we go with that. Now um, after when we're doing the canning process if we get to the end and we run out of brine it's not a problem. I have all the stuff here so I can just mix up another batch, bring it to a boil. Uh, the jars are fine if they just stay packed in the oven so you don't need to worry about that either. Um, at this time you could also set your oven to 325 so when your jars are packed um, you can put them in there and they can stay warmed because the whole idea is everything needs to stay hot in order for it to seal. So let's get started on the rest. So my next item in business is going to be to open up this very nice large bag of dills. As you can see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this sink right here with lukewarm water. You do not want it hot. And you can't have it too cold or else it won't get the dirt off. So lukewarm is perfect. If you get it too hot, um, the cukes will get a little bit spongy and then they won't uh, seal correctly. So you don't want it like that. So lukewarm water, um, I'm going to put a bit of the bag in, wash them off, rinse them in this one, and I'm going to put them in a bowl. A good rule of thumb for when you are canning is use every big bowl you have in your house because you are gonna run out of place to put pickles before you start stuffing them into jars. I can guarantee you that. So I'm gonna get started on washing the pickles. And, well they're not pickles yet, they're cukes. And I'll show you part way through that process. So 
so I'm filling up the sink and I'm putting my pickles, my cucumbers in. I'm going to keep saying pickles all night. Now, some of them are going to have these little stems on the end of them. You don't want that. So if they're easy to twist off, you can do that and just throw it in a throwaway bowl. Um, if some of them, if you find a bad spot on it, you can always take a knife and just take it off the end and put it in your throwaway bowl. So that's my process that I do. Um, so yeah, I'm just filling the sink right now. And I'll probably do one, two, three, four, five sink loads it'll take about. And then we'll get to the next part. So the process that I'm just doing here is I take it out of the lukewarm water. I give it a little scrub off to the wash cloth. Not too hard because I don't want to break the cucumber. If I find that there's any spots on it that I don't like, I'll take it out. And then once it looks like it's nice and clean, it goes in the bowl with the rest of the shiny ones. And I just repeat that process until I get to the end of the bag. It does seem like it's very timely, but trust me, it is so worth it to have your own homemade pickles. So while I have Van over at the sink uh, scrubbing my pickles for me... I don't like what I have on with you on YouTube right now. <laughs> I'm gonna I don't like pickle making cold as well. Leave me alone. I'm going to get started on my hot peppers. I'm wearing rubber gloves because if you get this on you, it is hot. I like to leave the seeds in it. I will cut the tops off. So these are just hot banana peppers or they call them Anaheim peppers. So I got these. Uh, about two four six eight about a dozen and I also got some hot chili peppers because I thought that would be a nice kick too I won't put them all in the same jars obviously but so I'm gonna get started on cutting up my peppers and I'm gonna throw them in a bowl and then Gonna be cooking. So I'm just gonna cut my head off. Pickles. Guess what? Throw the head there. And then I'm just gonna make small slices. Like I said before, I want to keep the seeds because they have the hot in them. And these pickle very well. So I'm just going to continue cutting through all the peppers like this and put them into a bowl and try and make sure that I keep all the seeds in the bowl. I'm going to work on my dill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the top of the stock and work my way down and then if I need some extra I can take off the bottom. But I find that the best flavor is at the top. And I probably have way more than I actually need. I wish you guys could smell this because it smells fantastic. Dill is such a nice smell. 99 pickles on the wall, 99 pickles on the wall. <laughs> There's a lot of pickles to clean, guys. <laughs> so here's my stock. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it from here where the stem is. And then I have my little pieces, and this is what I want. This is where the most flavor I find is. And also in the stem too, so I'll put some of those pieces in. So I'm going to put them in here, in my bowl. And I'm going to just continue with that process. All right, so now I have my peppers cut. I have my dill cut up. Now I'm going to move on to my garlic. He's all excited because we were just listening to Gangnam Style and he was saying about how we should do it like whoop, 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 whoop pickle style. But I don't know if that one would catch on. Pickle style. <laughs> anyway, so I'm still going to leave my gloves on for the garlic because if I don't, then my fingers are going to smell like garlic for days. <laughs> um, that's, that's enough out of there. That's enough of you, Vanna. Yeah, that's right. So anyway. So now on to the garlic. 
Oh, by the way, my brine did come to a rolling boil. So I just turned it down to low for now until we're ready to pack the jars. Well, that should be like three or four hours from now. He lies. All right, guys, so we have a good amount of pickles washed up. I'm just gonna help Curtis finish doing the rest of these. I got my garlic all cut up and ready to go. The dill, our peppers, and then I have my extra bowl over there. And in here I just have my brine sort of on a little simmer and then all I have to do is turn it up to a boil when it's ready. So I gotta get my oven preheated so after I pack the jars I can put them in there and they can warm up. So the whole method of this all is I don't use a canner. You want everything hot. What does everything need to be Curtis? Oh, lukewarm. He lies. Everything needs to be hot. So your lids need to be hot in your pot. Your brine needs to be hot in the pot. And your jars need to be hot and packed in the oven before you put the brine and the lid on. So everything will seal. All right, we're gonna go finish doing up these cukes and then we're gonna pack some jars. Okay, so we finished hulling and cleaning all of the cucumbers thanks to Curtis. And now we're gonna start packing the jars soon. So that was 35 pounds of cukes. I got garlic, the dill, the hot pepper. So we'll show you how we're gonna pack one of the jars and the way to do it. And perhaps two. Maybe two. And then after that, we're just gonna go to town. So I'm gonna put my gloves on again because I don't want to handle the hot peppers or the garlic. So, this is how you put a glove on, in case you were wondering. <laughs> so this is how I usually do it. I usually put about two cloves of garlic down at the bottom. Another two cloves down here. I take one of my hot peppers Put it down the side of the jar, and that's a small one. There's another piece, another little one. So we have our garlic and our hot peppers in. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start packing the jar. You start packing the jar with the big pickles on the bottom. Try to get them to stand up if you can. So I always start out with the big ones on the bottom. How tight do you need to pack them? Uh, well you just start with the big on the bottom and work your way up from the medium and then you want the little ones on the top. Uh, the dill we'll put in the middle. You don't want the dill at the top. The reason being is if you look at the dill and all the little pieces, once you put your brine in, the dill will float to the top. That's no good. It could get in the way of where the seal needs to mm -hmm. be. So, do not, you're, it can get in the way of where the seal needs to be if the dill floats up to the top, so you want the dill in the So, just getting some of these bigger cucumbers in here. I might put another little hot pepper in the middle, because I only had that one. You got lots, well, maybe not, we have more than 30 jars of pickles, Kim. How many jars do you have? Uh, like 36. Oh, and the exact same as the wine bottle. All right, so I'm gonna come and put my... I'm just gonna take one of these sprigs of dill and put it in the middle. Like that. Maybe another little one. And I'm trying to pack these tight because we have quite a few. Trying to get those in there so we can see our hot pepper, we got our pickles, our garlic, our dill in there. Now I'm going to start choosing some more um, pickles that are a little bit, or cukes that are a little bit smaller to get to the top. And sometimes I might even put like a little garlic up at the top too.
Might take another little piece of garlic and stick it up there. It's really f free forming. And then we're get, starting to get tight in here. So I'm getting the rest in. So get as many in it there as you can. And there's your packed jar. So it has some dill in it. And I can still take some little pieces of this dill, just not the dill that has like the sprigs on it. And I can put that up towards the top because that won't get in the way of the lid, but just not the seed type. So then after my jar is packed, I want to make sure that it's all good. And then I'm going to take it and put it in the oven, which is at 325. And it's just going to sit there and heat itself until I'm ready to put the brine in. And then I'm going to repeat the process again. I'm going to put it in the oven and let it warm while we get the other jars finished. So that's what it looks like right now. And I'm going to turn my brine back up to a boil because everything needs to be hot. There we go with that. So as you can see, we have a pretty sweet assembly line going here. Assembler! New steam assembler. Sure. So we're almost done that and the first pack is in the um, oven. The lids are almost boiled and we're getting ready to lid. I got my jar out of the oven. I'm going to put my little thingy on top here. Frying is a nice boil. Yes, I ended up turning the oven down to 300 because it was a bit warm still. It's boiling. So everything hot. Everything needs to be hot. So I'm going to fill this up. Oops. Just so it's covering. Just a little over the top. Then I take this out. I keep a little wet cloth so I can just clean off the top. That's actually probably pretty important because eh? if it sure doesn't that... seal, yep. you're euchred. Then I get my lid, which sometimes they all like to stick together, so it's a bit of a pain in the bum. It's like playing a game. So I got my lid, put it on my jar, I'm gonna keep one of my oven mitts on. Seal it tight and then I'm gonna move it over here. Very important, once you've moved it, do not touch them. Leave them sitting for 24 hours because you could ruin the process of them sealing and all the goodness that they make. So just the same thing again. Put my little guy on. Get my brine out. Like I said, everything's hot. little guy off, clean off my edge. This goes for any kind of canning. If you're doing applesauce, pasta sauce, you need to make sure that that edge is clean. Here's my lid, nice and hot. Stick it on there. nice and tight and then I'm going to move it over to the counter. So right now you can see that the lid is up a little bit. There's a little circle in the middle. You'll hear a little pop and then the, it'll go down and that means that it's sealed. 
So I still have Curtis, the pickle packing master here. Pickle packing master. Yeah. How how many times can you say that fast? When am I getting my acknowledgement in Congress to the pickle packing master award? Uh, that's in the states. I'd like. That would be Parliament here. I'd like a actual trophy. So we still got lots of brine left, and here's our jars that have sealed. Oh, one just popped. One just went. Perfect timing. They're sealing. We've had a couple of pop already. So exciting. So that's a good thing. You can see they're all turning the pickle color. So that's normal for them to have a little discoloration on them. Oh, there another one went. So they're all starting to seal. So that's what, six I think now that went? Yep, six of them are sealed already. So the grand total for 35 pounds of cucumbers is 33 jars. We've got a couple more to go in the oven. We have a bunch that are already starting to seal. We have one getting the brine put in. A couple more left in the oven. Excuse me. We have brine going in. I'm getting in trouble for getting in the way. And I guess the total was about uh, 12 to 15 of the banana peppers. And we figured probably maybe we could have used a couple more of the uh, the hotter peppers. What were those hotter ones called, Kim? Chili. The chili peppers. Uh, maybe like seven, seven or eight of the chili peppers, depending on how hot you like them, right? I mean, you don't. I guess that's really a, a preference to uh, how you like your pickles. We like them a little bit hotter, so we use a little bit hotter peppers. Uh, I was actually reading that you can actually use even jalapeno peppers if you prefer. Um, oh boy, critical, critical. We missed some pickles. <laughs> There's gonna be about 34 jars when it's all said and done. Okay. <laughs> so here's our final product, everybody. We ended up with 32 jars of hot pickles, and they all sealed. So we're pretty excited about that. Thank you for joining us on this journey today of canning. I know that it's sort of a lost art and a lot of uh, people my age don't really do it anymore. But um, this is an out east um, recipe that I learned from my grandmother Doris. So everybody say thank you to Doris and thumbs up. And this is a pretty foolproof recipe and lots of people love it. It tastes really great and they last a long time. So um, yeah, thanks for watching today and we'll see you next time on Kim's Kitchen. Hi ladies and gents and thanks for watching the lesson for today. If there is something that you would like to learn how to cook or bake, please leave me a message below and I'll try to get to that in one of my lessons. Stay tuned for more lessons from Kim's Kitchen. Thanks for watching today's vlog, ladies and gents. Please click on that little red subscribe button so you can keep coming back and seeing our daily and weekly vlogs. If you like today's vlog, please give us a thumbs up. It really helps us out. Thanks for watching our vlog today and we hope to hear from you and you can see us again soon. Later. See you soon. Have a nice day. Don't forget to subscribe.